Why it's not for another math? Easy. So we're going to discuss uh, well further into antiderivatives or integrals, but basically uh, look at some examples here and do this part one of this example series. I'm going to go further on and basically look at this example here. But before I do the example, I'm just going to do a recap on my previous video on antiderivatives. Basically, antiderivative is if you had a function like let's say f of x here, then the antiderivative is just f of x if the derivative of this f of x is equal to this f of x. So this is an antiderivative of f of x. And the example that I used in my previous video was basically if you had f of x equals 2x squared, then if you, if you find a function like this one, then the antiderivative is going to be equal to, well, x 3 over 3, because the derivative of this function is equal to, well, using power rule, 3x squared over 3. These 3's cancel and x squared. So this equals f of x. So that's the example I used there. Also just a recap on there. Now let's look at example 1 here. Basically, find the most general antiderivative of each of the following functions here. And uh, there's basically a, b, and c here. But a is uh, sine x, and b is 1 over x. This one's x to the n. Well, let's look at sine x first here. So for a, f of x equals equals sine of x and then now what we have to do is find a function whose derivative is equal to sine x. Well this one if we recall our derivatives of trigonometry the answer to this one is just going to be simple f of x equals 2 negative cos of x because we know that d cos of x or d over dx cos of x is equal to negative sine of x so if we just put a negative in there and negatives cancel equals sine of x because then yeah the derivative in this case is equal to sine of x equals f of x. But uh, in the example asked for most general antiderivative and because uh, like before I showed in my other video you have to add a constant always. So the most general ones is going to be f of x equals to negative cos of x plus c. And this is just an arbitrary constant. Yeah, we add this because if you, whatever the constant is, if the derivative is going to be zero, so you could have a negative cos x plus two. The derivative is going to be the same as negative cos x plus three, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, so now let's look at uh, part b here. F of x equals one divided by x here. So b. Well, in, in this case here, if you see my earlier video on ln derivative of of ln or log of x, uh, basically this one here is if we had a function. Uh, ln of x here, the derivative of this one, or d over dx, ln of x is equal to 1 over x. So this is the antiderivative for this case, but this is, interval is from 0 to basically infinity. So where a x is from 0 to infinity, because you remember that the graph of the ln curve looks to, something like this here. So this is ln, and it's and this is yeah, the y of y and this is the x-axis here and this is from 0 to basically infinity it's not defined for here but I, I showed also in my earlier video you can see the video link in the info below basically the derivative of d ln absolute value of x d of x is also equal to 1 over x yeah and this one here the inter the uh, interval is from basically all real numbers except where x cannot equal to 0 because it's just over in this case here and you can see on the the video also on lawn explaining why you can't have a zero there. But anyway, so now this would be the uh, the more general one. It's the most general uh, solution we could find, and the, the answer would be basically f of x is equal to lawn, well, absolute value of x. Then we have to add a constant here. So we add this, and, and this uh, you could write this as yeah, as a two part uh, question, uh, as a two part answer in this one. This, this can be fx equals to, well, because remember what absolute value is, basically ln of x, not absolute value, when x is greater than 0, because the absolute value doesn't do anything, and then it's going to be ln of negative x for x is less than 0. And remember, x cannot equal to 0 in this case. So this is the most general, uh, add the plus c, plus c. So this is the most general solution, uh, or general antiderivative to that uh, function, um, 1 over x. Okay, so now let's look at part C of this one, f of x equals x to the n, where basically n is not equal to negative 1, because if it was equal to a negative 1, this, is, this would just be 1 over x here. And this would be what part B is, and that's the ln 1 here. But in this case, we have to use our product rule, if we recall that. I'll just go here. Well, let's just uh, write this down here. So the, the product rule, no, I mean the power rule. Basically, if we look at the derivative of this one here, 
of the derivative of a power rule like a, something like this one d over dx this is going to be equals to this is going to be n x n minus 1 here so we have to find a way to cancel these uh, this way here and, and it, it turns out that the antiderivative is actually going to be over this one d over dx if we had an x n plus 1 and then this is divided by n plus 1 here because if you take the derivative of this one now you're, this is going to go down so this is going to be n plus 1 over n plus 1 x then you have to subtract the one here and then you're gonna have this this is just equals to xn so this is the well the the uh, antiderivative of it so because it equals to xn here so the antiderivative we could just write down as f of x is equal to well xn plus 1 divided by n plus 1 and then plus c like always and this uh, the interval for this one here is basically for for whenever well n is greater than or greater than equal to uh, zero, and even if it e equals zero, you're just going to have an x to the well one, and that's going to be x, and the derivative is going to be one. So the, the derivative works uh, even if whatever this one is, if you put a zero there. But if you had something like um, n less than zero when it's not equal to negative one, because for negative one you're going to have the ln x uh, scenario. But if it's less than zero here, then you're just going to have something like a yeah, for example, if n is equal to, let's say, negative 2, then, then the f of x would just equal to, this is x to the negative 2, and this is equal to 1 over x2. So this works uh, regardless. We could use the power rule like we showed above and to get this uh, antiderivative. But the problem uh, here now is just to watch out for when x, well, it can't equal 0 here. Otherwise, you're going to have a 1 over 0. So it works for when it's less than 0, only when x is not equal to 0. Yeah, and then uh, once we were done these examples, now if you were to do different function here, basically you have a table of what the particular antiderivative is. This is this is just f of x with this is without the plus c, so we're without it here. But basically uh, the general one, we always have to add add a plus c and whatnot. Basically, I just made a table of of different antiderivatives here. But in this one is more general. If you had something like c of f of x, then then the uh, particular antiderivative or just antiderivative you would just take it would just be the constant this is a c is a constant times whatever the antiderivative of this function was and also for addition if you had f of x plus g of x for example if you had let's say x squared plus x cubed here then then this is going to be the antiderivative of this plus antiderivative of this one and in this case is going to be well x3 over 3 plus this is x uh, this is 4 over 4 the four there. Yeah, so that's all it's saying is that if you had two functions to add up, you just add up the antiderivatives here. And then also if you had a, a constant, you're just going to leave the constant there when you do the antiderivative. And then this is what we just showed above here, the x to the n, you give it an x n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And 1 over x, you have the ln x e to the x, well the antiderivative is just going to be e to the x, because that's the derivative of, of itself. And cosine of x, it's sine, because the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. And sine of x, the antiderivative is negative cos of x, because the derivative of this is this, which I showed above. And also, this tan squared derivative is secant squared, so the antiderivative is, is this one here. And the similarly, in this case here, the derivative of secant x is secant x times tan x, so that's the antiderivative of this one. So, And then uh, when we have something like this one here, this is just inverse sine of x is the antiderivative on this one as well and in this case here the inverse tan of x you can see the video link below for the derivative uh, proofs of these two and then uh, yeah basically uh, th that's all for today hopefully uh, you learned from this you could uh, download the the notes like always and well that's all for today and um and hopefully you learn and stay tuned for another math easy solution